याद सताती है आखिर घर कब जाएंगे है ये जुदाई की रुत लंबी मगर उम्मीद है कि एक दिन वो राह पाएंगे पोटला में फिर सजेगी अपनी बस्ती लासा में आएगी फिर से धूम और मस्ती लोसार की खुशियाँ सब मिलके बांटेंगे शायद गर्मी की छुट्टियाँ साथ काटेंगे Shivangi Singh runs her own NGO called Drishtikon Changing Perspective which provides gender education to people across socio-economic demographics. Currently she is voluntarily working at the education department of Central Tibetan Administration on gender education and sensitization. Hello Shivangi and welcome to Tibet TV. Thank you for calling me here. I'm happy to be here. So Shivangi, first of all, I must compliment you on your appearance today. You look really nice in chuba. So how are you feeling? Is it comfortable? Thank you so much. I love wearing chuba. Actually, now it's my second nature to wear chuba. So this is your first time wearing chuba after coming to Central Tibetan Administration. No, I wear chuba every day to my office ever since I've come here, and I love it. <laughs> wow, that's really nice. So uh, Shivangi, you have written a beautiful poem for the Tibetans that you had in your presentation, and in the poem you had shown a lot of love and affection for the Tibetans. And I had also gone through your presentation where you had written individual stories on Tibetans. So Shivangi, how did you? managed to get all those stories and meet all those personalities and why did it impact you so much about their stories about coming to India from Tibet? Uh, my poem and my, my presentation was prepared for a platform, a public platform where I was going to speak some days back but at the last minute it was cancelled and I was told that the nature of the story, the nature of my presentation might be too controversial. So we can debate on why that must have happened. But to answer your question, I was most impacted by the stories, the journeys that people took while coming to India or Nepal from Tibet because I had not heard about these stories. I didn't know in detail what actually they go through. And I was surprised that nobody is talking about it. Even the people who know, people from outside of India who are well aware of what is going on, they are trying to hide away from speaking the truth. And what uh, impacted me about the community the most was when I spoke to these people, I was a complete stranger. I would take initiative, I would go and I would talk to them and they would just open up to me. The kindness, the love that I was shown here was something that I will really always carry forward with me. And Shivangi, I think this is a very common incident that most of the Tibetans and the Tibet supporters, they face. You know, like I had also recently interviewed our former Si Kyong, Dr. Lufsang Singhye, uh, where he spoke about how his uh, conferences and how his talks were cancelled even at the last moment. So here we can say that even though the causes of Tibet and the issues of Tibet, it's a big issue, right? People are self-immolating and Tibetans in Tibet, they are not having the basic human rights. So this is a big issue, but yet it is being very sensitive and people, they don't want to talk about it. So uh, Shivangi, how did you know about Central Tibetan Administration? And before volunteering at uh, CTA's Department of Education, were you aware about the Tibetan Administration in Dharamshala and the causes and issues of Tibet? I came to Dharamshala first as a child mm -hmm. and um, I was very young and I remember watching the gate and my father telling me that the Tibetan government works here in exile. And How old were you then? I must have been I think 10 or 8 years old and I was most fascinated by it because the architecture of the gate itself was very beautiful and I had never seen anything like that. So that stayed with me. Mm -hmm. And I first heard about the cause of Tibet. Uh, of course, I had read the Free Tibet Movement and I had so, so seen the bland banners and slogans many times, Free Tibet. But the first time I actually got to know about the cause was from this classmate of mine when I was studying in Ashoka University. And I was in Young India Fellowship and he opened up and he spoke about uh, his life. He had come to India from Tibet, leaving his family behind. And I could never imagine anything like that. So that stuck with me. The strong emotion of his story, of his life stuck with me. When I realized that I, there is so much that I don't know, even living in India, and I decided to explore more.
Mm, that's really nice. And you have achieved quite a lot in terms of your social work. Your work on social activism on gender issues have, co have been covered by more than 30 national and international media platforms. So Shivangi, can you tell us something about yourself and the work that you do at CTA's Department of Education? Well, I am an engineer who became a counseling psychologist and then studied gender issues in depth at Ashoka University. And um, I got the opportunity to uh, go to Harvard University, represent India at international platforms such as St. Gallen, Switzerland. So I think I've been very lucky. And um, my work in uh, Department of Education, or SHIRIG as we call it, has been under the themes of gender and entrepreneurship mostly. And under that, we have uh, worked on developing an education curriculum for gender education in schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I am working on many res research reports. One of them is on destigmatizing vocational education uh, and uh, preparing research reports, which is a comparative study between the Tibetan education policy and the new education policy that has come up. Other than that, I have been involved in um, you know gender sensitization programs and gender. Pr I prepared a gender mainstreaming report, which is in keeping with the United Nations standards for Shirig. That's wonderful. You also have your own NGO called Drishtikon, which means changing perspectives, which you started in 2018, which deals mostly with gender sensitization in the education system. And your NGO has actually impacted more than 50,000 people. That is quite a lot. So Shivangi, since you have worked in both the Indian and the Tibetan community in terms of the education system, you must have the knowledge of both the communities. So what do you have to say about the education system in the Tibetan community? Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate the community on having such a brilliant Tibetan education policy that we have. Many of the things, many elements of this policy are only now being incorporated by the Indian government in their new education policy, which came out in 2020. For example, the focus on vernacular language. Uh, we do that with the aim of conserving our language, preserving the Tibetan language, which I think is very important. And in India, we've only now realized that it is very important to teach students, especially the younger students, in their own language. So that is one very b beautiful element of our uh, community that we are trying to do. And then other than that, one very interesting trend that has come up in my research is that um, in the Tibetan community, the focus is on uh, educating the girl child quite a lot, which is uh, you know something which we don't see in the Indian community. So that is encouraging. People actually want their uh, girls to get educated formally and then have that job. They want them to be employed. So that is really heartening to see. But at the same time, I've also observed this trend where people want their boys, their, you know, their sons to uh, be more towards the vocational training right from a young age rather than you know, having a formal education. So I think that we can improve on. That aspect needs to be improved upon. So Shivangi, like you said that you've been working here for quite a long time and it's been almost uh, 10 months that you've been working at the Department of Education. So since you are here in Dharamshala working at CTA, what did you find the most fascinating about the Tibetan administration? I think the very idea of having a government, a full-fledged government, which is working in exile with its different departments, different ministries, that is, is very fascinating to me. I was lucky enough to be here at the time when the elections were going on. You know, it was most interesting to see how even from people outside of India, the, the Tibetan community across the world has a procedure to actually vote for their new Sikyong. So for me, that was something that I, I'll always remember to be here and uh, at a time where you know uh, I got the opportunity to interact with both our Sikyongs and uh, different uh, Kalons, our education ministry, uh, Dr. Pema Yangchen, who was our uh, minister of education. So I think for me, it was just that I'm very lucky to be here actually at this point, at this point in time. And I think that it's also very fascinating to me to see how dedicated and sincere people are in uh, different departments of the Central Tibetan Administration, even though you know it is something where people feel that it is all about public service. So they give a, a lot of themselves. That is something I will always carry with me. <laughs> So Shivangi, this is also what we want, you know, the Tibetan media. We try to reach not just the Tibetan communities across the world, but also to all the Tibet supporters as well. And it feels so nice to see that a young uh, activist, social activist like you, taking interest in the Tibetan cause and actually showing 
feelings for the Tibetan struggle. Thank you so much, Shivangi. It was so nice doing this conversation with you and knowing more about how you feel for the Tibetan cause. Thank you for coming to our show. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode of In Conversation with Tibet TV.